So Blackburn's the Crackside's driest lake. It was once the largest expanse of water on the grounds until its dam burst in 1927, flooding the village of Rothbury below. Over the years, this area has evolved into a wetland, making it a great place for wildlife spotting. Right, it's time for lunch. It's five to one. And we've been here since about 20 to 11. Another family pulling in. Of course, there's so many walks to do around here. They build car parks all around the estate off the carriage drive so you can pull in numerous spots, park, have a picnic and then go and do your walk. Little circular walks, well marked on the map. Well this is a jolly ham and peas pudding sandwich and I'm going to enjoy it. So this is Kruja Car Park, there's a kiddies play area and the cafe and toilets. And we're heading down to Molly's, Nelly's Moss Lake. See if we can spot any wildlife. Toilet area. No sign of any wildlife on the lake, ducks, swans. Makes you wonder why it's such a beautiful lake. So it's the walk we're following, Nelly's Moss. Look at all these little, let's have a look in here, see what's in, hiding in here. There's another pathway linking somewhere else. You could spend years wandering around this estate and you'd find new ways to go every time. So I think I'll be here more than once or twice a year. Of course you do need a National Trust membership to visit here. I think I paid about £90 for the year. Of course, when you look at it, it's an adult to come in today and pay is about round about 25 pound. 
So we'll say four visits is £100. Well, I've been here, I think this is the fourth time I've been here this year, so I've certainly got my money back. And I've been to Wallington Hall about four times as well. That's National Trust. So if I was paying for all the places, you know, that's probably nearer, nearer £200. So it certainly benefits to be a member of the National Trust. And there are many other places to visit. So there are two main places I haven't been to in the North East yet. One seat in Delville Hall and the other is Gibside. Whether I'll get to them this year or not, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I might get to them because the weather's starting to turn a bit now. It's getting a bit chilly, so. so if there's no snow or frost, it'd be worth it just to go and have a look at the change of season. So we came from up the top here, that's the carriageway drive, goes round the estate, the car's park just on the other side of the road in the car park. And you can walk right around this lake. So this is the upper lake on Nelly's Moss Lakes. And here we have another boat house. So I'm having a walk around the upper lake on Nelly Moss Lakes. It's a bit more open this one and not as rocky as the, uh, the first stretch. Which can be a little bit difficult, you've got to be careful where you're putting your feet. You just want to be tripping over. top lake which must be the north lake so now we're going to head down the side of the south lake and hopefully back to the car park and have a nice cup of tea cup of coffee
Right, so we're making our way down to the water flume. And these steep stairs. Some old bolts there. Must have been something anchored here at one time. That's uh, an overspill, isn't it? Lifted up to let the water out. And that would flow down there. So whenever they were watering down there, so we'll follow the flume down. I can't see any signs of any leakage, so obviously the joints are well held together. Looks like another stream down there, so maybe that's where the diversion from that water gate went to.
doesn't look as though we've reached the end of the flume. And it turns into a stream and that makes its way down to Nelly's Moss because we came halfway up here before when we decided to turn around and go back. So we found this divert in the log flume on the way down and there's a mechanism for diverting the water which my colleague Ron is going to demonstrate. So we slide the gate out of there and we get some flow but not a lot. But then there's a place on the other side to put the gate back in and that increases the flow of water. So that's how that system worked. Very simple. So we'll put the gate back and virtually stops the flow of water. So we are now looking for the labyrinth, which is almost like a maze constructed by rhododendrons. Oh, here we have a statue. This looks like the labyrinth. Looks like a stone or wood sculpture of a wizard. Dog. So we're in the labyrinth, which is just a maze of rhododendrons and paths. Some go to dead ends, where the statues, some go around in circles. The main thing is not to trip. There are a lot of tree roots. all over and little stumps of wood sticking up from old snapped off trees.
Well, we're still in the labyrinth. I've been following Joe's advice and we've been here about four and a half hours. Oh, I don't want to duck through there. I'll go the long way around. I knew we should have brought some yellow ribbons, Joe. Tie on the trees. Fox. And we found the keyhole. 